Say hello to the boys and girls. No, break not. Welcome back. Uh, today's video is just going to be an update on all my bioactive enclosures. There's no animals in this one, but it's just a walkthrough of how my enclosures have developed since you last saw them. There's been a couple of build videos that I've done um, just to sort of show you how they've evolved, how they've grown in, what's changed with them, what's worked, what's not worked, all that kind of thing. Plus there's a brand new enclosure that you haven't seen on this channel that's the new home for my fire belly toads. Now, I didn't film the building of this one because I wasn't sure how it was gonna go or how it was gonna work because I've been watching a lot of videos from, by a channel called Biotope Galleries. Now, I'll put their link in the description of this video. If you like enclosure builds, uh, if you like people like Serpa Design, people like that, then these guys are next level, seriously. They are mind-blowing, their enclosures. Heck, if you watch their videos, you'll watch them and you'll think, okay, that looks a bit weird, but when they start putting it all together, it's mind-boggling how they work, and they are, like I say, they're just next-level enclosures. I can't get enough of them. I can't get enough of telling people about them, so I'll stop before I get carried away. But yeah, we'll get into the video, show you these enclosures and see you at the end. Now this one's been featured on my channel, I think once, maybe twice before. This is the home to my crested gecko, Kermit, who is hidden at the moment, just up the back there. But again, this has a polthos in it. This is kind of a theme in these enclosures, to be honest. Um, we've got a bromeliad up there that's growing. We've got the plant behind it that I can't remember the actual name of, but that's that's kind of grown in well. Now, these plants do change every now and then because some die off. I add some, I change some. Like this, this thing. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. But this is starting to take off again. It's kind of filling out like a little tree, which is what I was hoping it was going to do in the first place. But we've got a fern, we've got this. <laughs> I really need to start learning plant names and some moss just in various places on there. But again, this was this was the first bioactive enclosure that I built. And since then, my, my builds have got slightly better, but I still like the way this one looks. And the gecko seems happy in there, which is the most important thing. And this is home to my male gargoyle gecko, Streak. Now this one has sort of changed since it was first built. It did have a big Tillandsia here, but I unfortunately I let the pothos get too overgrown in this enclosure and it kind of starved the light to it So it's died, but I will be putting another plant there at some point But we do have four different kinds of pothos in this enclosure now I can't for the life of me remember their names, but we got this nice looking variegated one uh, There's these ones with the silver speckles on the leaves the standard One that you see and there's another one at the back there. That's never really grown I think it might be too light style to be honest with you. And we have three types, not four, my apologies. But again, we've got a little bit of moss on the floor. Now I've added this wandering dew at the bottom here and it's starting to take. We've got all these little offshoots coming up. You can't really see because my fat hands in the way, but all these little offshoots are coming up. So that should start spreading across the ground and up this cork bark tube uh, branch, which is what I wanted just to give it a bit of very you know a bit of variation another texture in the enclosure but again i do like the way the this enclosure looks it's got a big stripy bromeliad at the top there which i may need to change out at some point because it won't stop growing and it's getting quite big but i do like the way it's sort of spreading out at the moment so this one if you remember was one of my build tutorial videos this was for my, at the time I housed my two female gargoyle geckos in there, but now this is home to only one of them because they did start fighting for dominance and both lost their tail. So I decided that it was high time I separated them, but I just wanted to give you a sort of an idea of how the enclosure's grown in. Now the moss on this side has taken, it started to spread actually across the rope now, which is cool. It's take, It's kind of, weaved its way around these bromeliads, which are actually producing another one over there. These ones keep producing spikes, it's brilliant. I can use them in other enclosures. 
But the moss there has taken the moss this side. For some reason, it just doesn't seem to work this side, and I've got no idea why. The pothos goes absolutely nuts in here, and every now and then I have to just trim it back. But the, I knew this was going to happen, and it's kind of achieved the effect I wanted to. It's like a jungle canopy. I think it's brilliant. And further down, we have another offshoot from this Tillandsia at the back just there. And we've got some new bits and pieces in there. The Wandering Jew did start to take and it just got trampled on by the gecko, but I have actually put another section of it down here and this one's growing. So fingers crossed that one won't get destroyed. There's some uh, stems of grass that I picked out of my Sturmy tank, which you'll see soon. And there's just one of these um, seed pods. Now that has actually molded, but that's normal for these. They do go through that acclimatization but it will stop molding at some point. But everything else, this, this plant's looking a bit sad at the minute, but that one didn't really take. But everything else about this enclosure is really cool. And this one, if you remember, was in my last build tutorial. This was the new home I built for one of my female gargoyle geckos. Now, I love this enclosure. I've added more to it. I've got this lotus pod, I've got this Hedgehog flower, there's another nut behind that. Now they're going through that acclimatization at the moment. Now the floor has changed significantly since I built it because I did have a bit of an issue with uh, drainage at one point because I sort of, you know, I, I accidentally overwatered it. But I've sorted that out. But what I've done now as well is carpeted the whole of the floor in moss. I've changed a couple of the plants out because the original. Ficus pumula that I put in there died back a little. Now it has done what I was hoping it was going to do. It has spread up across the branches in a couple of places, but these new ones should take a bit better and start to spread more. Again, I've added a little bit of wandering dew in there, which, like the other one, has started to take. Now the fern's still doing well, which is good news, and the bromeliads have really taken off. Now I added a couple more from the original build. I added this one here which is looking pretty good with the pink and reds on it. And I added that one there, which is looking a little bit sad, but it is growing. So we're gonna leave it in place. Now I did change it up as well. I did have a big bromeliad up the back, but that really didn't survive for some reason. So I'm trying another one in its place. And I've added a little one up the top of the tree there. But overall, I love the way this enclosure is looking. I think it just looks so lush. And this is the Therophosa Sturmy enclosure that I built not too long ago, and it's looking cool. I'm not going to lie, I love this enclosure. Now, some of the moss is sort of dying off in patches, but regrowing, so it's cycling the way it probably should do. We've got moss growing all the way around it. It's actually started to spread across that big piece of cork flat that I put in there. Now, I did have to change the water bowl out because unfortunately the other one started to lick, but never mind. Everything else has acclimatized well. And as you can see, the pothos has started to spread all the way across the back, which is what I knew it would and I was hoping for. But the grass in this enclosure has gone bonkers. Now this isn't something I planted in here, this came in with the moss that I put in. But I think it gives it such a cool natural look and there's no way I'm taking that out. But yeah, I love watching how these tanks evolve and grow and this one has changed drastically since I built it. And I'm loving it. Now you'll have to excuse the reflection but there's not a lot I can do about that at the moment. But this is a tank you haven't seen on my channel before. You may have seen it on Facebook or Instagram, but this is one that I built a few months ago now. And this is the new home for my Firebelly Toads. Now, the enclosure I built them really didn't work. It, it looked good at the beginning, but the little buggers trashed it. They really trashed it. All the grass that was at the bottom of the tank got churned up and it just looked like a sewer in the end, to be honest with you. So I decided to build them something new, and this is what I've come up with. Again, it's a paludarium, it's half water, half land. Now I've built this one slightly differently. If you wanna know how I built it, then contact me and I'll tell you because it's a little convoluted, it's a little complicated the way that I built this one. I've been watching a lot of videos on a 
channel called Biotope Galleries and I learned some new techniques and I've employed them in this enclosure. Now there's the main structure of this is big pieces of driftwood and it really works. Now there's one, I'll get a closer look for you in a minute. There's one that acts like a waterfall and there's a couple of other bits that are branches that as you can see, these little guys love climbing on. Now if you watched, I don't know, if you watched Clint's Reptiles video, now he spoke about fire-bellied toads not really liking to climb, but in my experience they do. Whether he meant vertically like up sheer surfaces i don't know but mine absolutely love to climb there's another one there and the other one is just poking its head up behind there there's three of them in here which is what i had to start with and I, I did want to add some more but i can't find the same species now there are different species of fire-bellied toads but you can't mix or you shouldn't really mix the different species together because of the toxins they give off they could actually be harmful to the other occupants but these guys seem to be doing really really well in here and they love it there are various plants throughout the scape under the water we've some anubius nana just various bits planted here and there we have a little bit of wandering dew up the top i'm kind of fond of this plant in the back there that is actually an orchid that is Dosinia marmorata. It's a jewel orchid and it seems to be doing really well in here. It's grown, it's shot up, it's producing new leaves. So happy days. We'll get you a closer look at that in a minute. And this is a Margravia. This is Margravia sententiae. Now, this has doubled in size since I bought it. It was like a little bit. To about there so yeah it's, it's doubled in size and it is continuing to work its way up we've got some new growth at the top there the le the leaves actually start off red and then change to green as it grows but again we got little bits of anu anubius up there someone come to say hello hello they are so cute they're really active as well which i do like but you can see i need to sort of cover this with another little piece of moss but the waterfall basically runs down this nice big piece of cork bark here. The color of the water isn't actually dirty. That's just the tannins from the driftwood. But we've got little bits of moss sort of sprouting from the driftwood. I did plant these on there, but they are starting to sort of grow and spread out. And eventually they should pretty much carpet these bits of driftwood. But I do like this enclosure. I do like the way it looks. And I've capped off this is the water for, this is the pump area, should I say. As you can see down there, there's some sort of little rings rather that um, help with the beneficial bacteria. They help keep it in and spread it throughout the enclosure as the pump works. But I've carpeted all of the background so far in moss. There's parts of it that are dying off, parts of it that are spreading, but this is just this is just something that's bound to happen. But overall, I'm loving this enclosure, and the main thing is the toads seem really happy in here. And that was it. Like I say, a different kind of video this week. No animals apart from the brief glimpse of the Cresty. But I hope you like this video. I hope you like what you saw, and if it inspires you to want to try to build these videos for yourself, then give it a go. You know, I mean, I've I've got a couple of tutorials. There's other people that have done them. You can always watch people like Serpa Design, like Biotope Galleries. And <clears throat> you get a lot of people saying that, oh, I wish I could build that. I wish I could build like this. But the truth is, you can. You just got to try. You know, I mean, the only reason I sort of got into the bioactive side of the enclosures was watching other people do it. And I just took the plunge one day and thought, bugger it. Why not? I'm going to do it. And it's led to these enclosures, you know, all the way from the first one, which was... This tank, Kermit's tank, that was the first one. And the last crested gecko, I, uh, the last gecko enclosure I built, sorry, was the this one down here for my gargoyle gecko. But then it's gone on, it's evolved, and, you know, I built this tank for the fire belly toads. It just, you improve every time you do it. There's, that's just what happens. You naturally improve, you naturally get better. Your techniques change, you can, you learn different things. 
and you implement it in every new build. But you can do it, trust me, anybody can do this. You don't need some great imagination or artistic flair. It's just a case of putting things together where they look right and thinking, yeah, I like that. And as long as you're happy with it, that's the most important thing. But like I say, anyone can do this. It's trial and error. Lots of trial and error, don't get me wrong, but you can do it. But if you want any, you know, if you want any tips or any tricks that I've learned myself, then leave a message, leave a comment on the video, send me a message. If you're friends with me on Facebook, Instagram, anything like that, you can always message me. I'll be happy to help. I'm happy to help anyone that wants to learn, wants to try these things, you know. I don't know everything, but I can tell you what I do know. So that's not a problem. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for this video. Just a quick reminder that on Thursday night, it's the Webber's live chat. Now it's a Halloween special, so we'll all be dressed up and made up. God knows what we're doing yet, but we'll get there it's tomorrow night. Better do something quick then. But um, yeah, we'll see you there at eight o'clock and we'll see you in the next video.